Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how to use 3JS in general. Oh, how exciting! So we have a lot of things going on with Zim and 3JS at the moment, and we thought we would do uh, an explore on 3JS itself. So let's go take a look at an example. Here we have a cube inside of Skybox in 3JS, and we're using orbit controls. We're, we have some lighting on this cube as well, and there are different types of materials on the cube, and they, uh, they'll work differently with lighting. Some work with lighting and some don't work with lighting. The cube itself has what's called a geometry, and that would be a box geometry in this case. And there are other geometries in 3JS, like a cylinder, a sphere, um, a plane, and some weird ones like torus and so forth. Okay, a cone. Um, so 3JS is a, an HTML, JavaScript, um, framework for three-dimensional things, probably the most popular in the world uh, for that. And it's quite simple to use, and it's very much like Zim, and uh, Zim is 2D, obviously. So we're going to go in and take a look at some code on how to build this. So uh, basically, as mentioned, you've got a geometry, and then you've got a material that gets meshed to that geometry and makes what's called a mesh. So what we're looking at here is a mesh. The material can also have a texture, and the texture is the sort of the picture part of it, I guess we'll call it. All right, and so um, that material can be have sides. As, as, well, there's sides to the geometry here, but the material can be front side, so that would be what we see here, the front side of things, or the material can be back side, which is what we're seeing in the sky box, because we're inside that. Uh, it's actually a sphere, <laughs> sky sphere. Uh, we're inside that, so we want the back side of the material to show, whereas here we're outside this, and we want the front side of the material to show. Um, on a plane, for instance, if you just have front side, only one side would have material or be seen. Uh, but you can also do double sides, so that that is both sides can be seen. All right, there's just some things. We're using orbit controls to, to look around here. And it, right now it looks like definitely we're moving the camera. But if we didn't have a sky box, there's a sort of a common misconception about orbit controls or when you use them. Because if you didn't have the sky box, it would look like we're just rotating the, the cube or the, the mesh here. Uh, but indeed, we're really picking up the camera in a sense and rotating the camera around this. You can tell because, well, the skybox is moving, but also the lighting uh, is not really changing. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Now we're looking at the where it's backlit here. So we're not rotating the cube because the light is stationary. Anyway, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, there's also first person controls, which will uh, let you sort of move through. A, the 3D world, and there's a few other things like uh, models that you would load in models. Uh, the most common way now is a GLTF loader. <laughs> uh, that's made things nice and easy for us, yay. Um, uh, everything's easy except saying the name GLTF loader, <laughs> GLTFs. Uh, but anyway, there's models, there's lighting. Um, okay, yeah, let's go and look at some code. Yeah, 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 code, code. How do we get out of here, F11? Down here we are in some code. The Probably one of the trickiest things to get started with 3JS is going to be getting started, as in loading this stuff. Over, over the years, 3JS has um, progressed from script tags into module tags, and then sort of is, is at the, hey, go find it on GitHub, fork the thing, build the thing how you want it, and, and it's like, oh my god. So not necessarily for your average kid coming in to use 3JS, which is too bad. But um, there's uh, we, we can just do an import here so from a CDN, and that makes it a little bit easier. But the issue is, is the different parts 
also need to be imported and the same versions need to be used for the most part anyway. So this has always been a bit of a pain in the neck growing up through 3JS handling um, new things that don't work with old things and old things that don't work with new things and all that. Anyway, why don't we leave that aside. I'm going to show you uh, a few things in this Explorer and that is we're just going to get 3JS this cube going but I want to show you it with raw 3JS so no Zim basically and then I'm going to show you it with uh, with the Zim as well. Um, yeah, so with Zim and that becomes sort of like a single import, which is a little bit easier there. Um, then we're going to do another explore on actually incorporating Zim and 3JS together in the various ways we do that. So that'll be two, three, four, and five right here. Okay, so um, in this first explore, we're, uh, most of it will be through this very first basics one where we're just looking at 3JS basics and introducing 3JS. That's, we've had some requests from the Zim users saying, hey, you know, how, how do we use 3JS? And so that's what this is about. All right, if you do go out and try and import from a CDN like, uh, like Cloud, uh, uh, like CDN.js on Cloudflare, um, you may get a version. This is the latest version of 3JS, R155. Uh, 3JS just increases their version number, like they used to be R154, obviously, and 153 before that. And so we have a bunch of versions that we've supported in Zim. Uh, let's see where can we find those there in the CDN. So let's here and where's our R's? There's our R's. So we started about in R109, R137, R142, R149, and now we're on the latest R155. But everything now is modules. It's not easy to find script tags anymore. So we're primarily dealing with mo modules now. And uh, let's see, so these guys right here have uh, their legacy in a sense. They, they have just been around to help us resize the window if we hit, um, uh, well, if we, if we scale the window and also to bring in uh, full screen, hit the M key for full screen. So uh, there's probably newer ways. I'm not sure. I haven't seen a newer way to incorporate that functionality along with that functionality as well comes with this uh, stuff on the canvas down here or the styling on that to just make that fit in there a little bit better and that will give you the full screen mode although I notice I'm getting that which I shouldn't be getting scroll bars so probably we should add something uh, overflow none on that or something like that I don't know why those scroll bars are popping in there I almost don't care though, because I think probably if you're certainly coming from a Zim side, you're most likely going to use the uh, Zim side, which is just one call. And as you'll see, saves us saves us some coding. Six, so Zim is 67% the code of, of the raw stuff. It just makes it easier. And it doesn't have the scroll bar issues. <laughs> you know, I'm not really too worried about it, but I, ju I just noticed that that popped in there. It's not in there all the time. so. Probably we just need to add an overflow false on the on the body uh, or whatever that is, the CSS stuff for that. Okay, um, so there may be a better way to bring in those. Note that these are not from 3JS themselves. It's a 3X right there. And we just got a couple lines down in the code below that will help us with that. That that for some reason I think in Europe they use the M key, so I just hit the M key and it magnifies it, I guess. Uh, we're totally used to using F11 here, so I, I don't think that um, matters all that much for that one. But you will be interested in having that scaling happen like that. The scaling happens in a certain way. I'll just point it out now, I suppose. When we when we go vertically, it all gets smaller. And when we go horizontally, it just centers. 
So, <laughs> sorry for the scroll bar. <laughs> Let's stop doing that, huh? Uh, but anyway, that's how the scaling works. And we do have a setting now in Zim that mirrors that scaling. Um, and we'll tell you about that as we go and look at bringing the Zim stuff in. All right. Hmm. So now we've got a module. Here are the links to those other files all throughout now. And then we're going to import. So we're importing as three. So we're going to be using the three namespace, uppercase. It's another thing that Europeans tend to do, or North Americans tend to use lowercase on that. So for instance, the Zim namespace is ZIM lowercase. Here we uppercase, which kind of makes sense. That's the traditional format for a constant. And we might consider three as a constant or the namespace is a constant. Um, so we're bringing in the module, the latest version of our 155, and uh, we'll just say it right now, if you've ever used older 3JS, they've updated the lighting, and there's a couple different versions, I think our 153 and our 155, where the lighting has changed quite a bit. In other words, if you use your old code, you're gonna get washed out colors even on on uh, textures that are images, you know, it's sort of like, whoa, uh, what's going on here? This this shouldn't be affected by lighting. Why is it all washed out? But anyway, we have a little bit of fixes for that. Well, not fixes, but the, the sort of current versions in there for that. So just watch out. We are importing orbit controls too, and both from the modules. And now, if you were in Europe, you might throw all the 3JS stuff in a script tag at the very bottom of your page, which means the body will have loaded. That's probably all we need. Um, however, we're here we tend to be used to using the <laughs> lovely DOM content loaded in an ad event listener, so I, I really don't blame Europe for doing it that way. Uh, in, in North America, we look at code and kind of say, Code is so important, we always want that at the top. We would never want to put that at the bottom. Uh, but that does mean that we have to run an event to find out when the bottom stuff is lo has loaded, and then we can run our code. So anyway, we've got a, a ready um, function being called here. You could do that in a, an arrow function too, if you wanted. Just put all your code in there. Uh, the reason I kept the ready in this example is in Zim, we recently had gone from an arrow function, which we had been using forever, um, to a, a callback. And we could still use the arrow function there, but Ready just made it a little bit friendlier for um, for kids to see, the youth to see, and you know maybe everybody who is coming in for, to code for the first time. Uh, so we just kept it the same format here. And then we're into the what would we call the boilerplate. So the boilerplate stuff is how to make a scene, how to make a camera, how to make the render. Uh, I guess the ev events right here that are, come from the external, not 3JS stuff, but the external 3X stuff. Uh, and then we're into a skybox, which is almost part of the template as well, maybe, if you almost always have a skybox. But anyway, this stuff, well, at least this stuff is the same pretty well all the time. You don't have to pay too much attention to it, really. That's at the top. And then at the bottom as well is our render loop, which is also always there. So that top part and the bottom part, we've abstracted that, taken it out and put it in the uh, Zim 3 helper module. So you're going to find that in the next one that we look at, that's going to be much easier. But anyway, let's go over it uh, relatively quickly, though, because, like I said, I don't, we don't really need to know all this stuff too much. We're going to make a scene. Great. And, and see, isn't that fun? Now, there is a namespace. Uh, Zim, you would have a namespace, too, if you wanted to. You can make a new uh, zim.frame, for instance, like that. Uh, a lowercase namespace. But this is roughly what's happening. The scene is kind of like your stage there. Okay, The frame makes a stage for us. So a uh, new three scene, great. And in the 3D world, just a little bit of a difference here. We're starting in the middle in a sense. So zero, zero, zero is right in the middle instead of zero, zero up at the top left corner. And also Y is positive going up. So Y is positive going up, X is positive going to the right. So that's the same, negative going to the left. And then Z is positive coming out of the window and negative going into the window. So if you want to 
um, we're going to position the camera, for instance, the camera to be able to look at something right in the middle. This thing's in the middle. To look at something in the middle, we're going to have to pull the camera out. So that's positive in the Z. And then if you take a look, when we refresh here, this is, I think, the front face of the cube. So we pulled the camera out and up and to the left. So negative in the X. So negative in the X, up in the Y, and, well, you know, probably be best to show you. Let's go take a look at that. Uh, that's down here. So we haven't quite got this stuff yet. So we've got this scene. Uh, but it, there's your message uh, as to the X, Y, and Z, just a reminder there. And now here's the camera. Uh, like I said, I hardly ever change this stuff. Near, far might affect you. Just be careful with that, that you don't want to make the skybox bigger than the, how far we can see. <laughs> That's pretty far, isn't it? 200,000! And our skybox, as long as we're within that, here's the skybox, it's 100,000! So we're within that. Oh, uh, yeah, we're definitely within that. Um, okay, well, we'll get to some of that stuff later. So, like I said, that, that will probably do you. And then we make a new three perspective camera. And that, that a perspective camera we'll see in 3D. There's also an orth orthographic camera, which is sort of like a flat camera. We use that for a HUD. And maybe we'll take a look at that um, in this last Zim 5 one. We make a HUD and we use an orthographic camera. But anyway, all, all my life working in 3JS, um, I've used a perspective camera and we pass in this stuff pretty well all my life. I haven't changed that. However, um, some of it might be of interest to you. It's sort of like how things deal with perspective. Like if we zoom in on that, you see how it, uh, I don't know, it can, it can, has, has depth that's going, that's the, the, whatever that's called, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, is it, what the heck is that called when the lines is that it's not parallax it's uh, the lines all converge perspective I guess so that's that's what um, if you change that you might get less perspective or more perspective quickly and it just you know will look a little bit different than this anyway um, like I said I've just kept those uh, traditional um Great, we have a camera, and here we are positioning the camera in the X, Y, and Z. So there's the negative Z, and let's why don't we why don't we do some adjustments? Why don't we put these both at zero and zero? Uh, first of all, if you didn't do any of this, comment it out. You run into a problem, and this I've been doing 3D for a long time, and this was one of my earlier first problems was. Uh, where is it? You know, I can't see it. Well, <laughs> not only that, the orbit controls don't seem to be working. We're now inside the box because if the camera will also default to zero, zero, zero. And now our camera's inside the box. And we did not put the material on the inside of that cube. It's only on the outside. So we can't see the cube. And if, we're, if we don't move the camera far enough away, we're not going to see it. Uh, so the first thing we might do is set it to 300 so that will pull it out of the screen and as long as the cube that we're looking at or is there a cube here it is it's 100 by 100 100 and that's the dimensions of the sides and 50 of that will be coming out towards us and 50 of it will be going away from us so we've got to pull it back at least 50 to see if we if we go 50 this is going to be right at it but anyway let's Keep it at 300 for now. And we refresh here. And there it is. There's the face of the cube right there. Okay. So we pulled back 300. And far she be. If we go 100 or 200, we're going to get closer, which means it'll get bigger. Now it's bigger. It's closer. Then there's moving in the Y. So we'll set that back to 300. If we move up in the Y, 100. So this is moving up. The camera is moving up. So the camera was facing directly, but now we've moved the camera up and we can see the top of it. Yay! And if we move the camera to the right, that's 100, then the, the cube will appear to spin to the left a little. There's the right, but take a look at that. The right's not quite as exciting, is it? Because it must be that the lighting is at the back somewhere. So the lighting is kind of up here. 
maybe because these two things uh, I can't tell the difference in the color no that's sorry so the lighting is kind of out here in the front and it's lit these two things almost equally or equally and I can't uh, I can't really see that there's any difference however if I go this way I get some nice shadow happening uh, yeah the light must be out here somewhere so I get some nice shadow happening and that's why I moved it to the left a little bit minus a hundred like that I can't remember were they hundreds no, they might have been 200s because that doesn't quite look like how I remember. So let's just move it a little bit more. 200, 200. Hmm, good enough. So there's a, oh, look, it's a cube in space. The red cube in space. Uh, right. Okay, good. So there's that. The other thing you may have noticed that we are using camera.position.set. So this is a, a difference between Zim and 3JS is that um, all of the X, Y, and Zs for position are on a position object. So you don't just say camera.x is equal to camera.y is equal to. And there's also um, other things too, such as rotation and scale. And they do the same thing. So nice and consistent, nice and tidy, just a touch annoying at times that's all um, so in Zim we've got uh, rotation we've only got a single rotation and, that, and that's maybe why is that wait a minute you know, we'd have to have rotation X rotation Y rotation Z but we do have a scale X and a scale Y and that's been no problem um, and we've got X and Y so we've got X Y we could have just had X Y Z scale X scale Y scale Z rotation X rotation Y rotation Z Instead, they've decided to be a bit more consistent and say camera.position.x. So you can do it this way too. Camera.position.x, camera.position.y, camera.position.z. And same with camera.rotation.x, camera.rotation, etc. And camera.scale.x. All right. So uh, there she be. Now the render, we're doing a WebGL render coming at some point, I guess, is a WebGPU I'm not, uh, render. I'm not sure if that's already made yet. Um, it's exciting, or anti-alias true. So like I said, this is boilerplate. You can probably just leave it like this. And that makes our render. The render is the thing that actually figures out what the scene should look like, all of your meshes and, and so forth and lights and puts it all together. And we do have now a couple things that are new. We're saying that the renderer's output color space is this linear color. So they've gone to this uh, more uh, apparently in lighting in general and various other 3D um, soft modeling softwares and stuff like that. Lighting is linear lighting and it makes it a little bit awkward. Like you can't have an intensity of one and have it look good. So, um, 3JS started with an adjustment, their own sort of lighting. And then they sort of kind of gave up right now and said, okay, okay, okay. We'll go to this linear lighting. That's that's my understanding. Did I put, I didn't put a link in here for all that? I thought I did. Uh, all right, I'll try and add the link to the information about this. This is all just happening recently. And there's also this color management over the last few episodes, um, episodes and <laughs> versions. I think it started in R133, uh, or 153, sorry. And then there's options to use legacy light. So here's some settings here. I'm not gonna look at that too much, just if you have a lighting problem. So this, what this does is it combines with down here with the lights. This is the intensity of the lights. And the answer is basically to take what we had traditionally thought was a good in intensity. And now in the new linear system, multiply it by math type dot pi all right i found that it, it wasn't kind of a direct correlation but it's a close enough one that we can make some minor adjustments to this number right here and get the right intensity for our lights i should have also i, I just realized there's a couple different types of lights this is directional this is ambient i almost always used a point light and i couldn't get point light to work and then i found just by accident on the forums the reasons why point light didn't work you have it to do another setting and I didn't put that other setting in here, so I probably should um, 
it may be that when you come back and take a look at this or watch the video and, and see the actual file that I've put a point light back in here with that setting. So just look out for that. But anyway, the lighting here is what's lighting our, our uh, cube. And it, like I said, it depends on the material. So I'm going to show you some materials that don't even care about the lighting and, and won't matter. But uh, if you do want the shading that we're seeing here, which is very nice, and uh, there's another material too that I'll show you that has some reflection, then you uh, should, then you'll, you'll want to do something with the lighting, which is where, right here anyway. Okay, so it's just a sort of a mix. What the problem was is if we used old lighting numbers, it would look really washed out unless we uh, did some of these settings or revert it. So this is legacy lights. All right, let's leave that for now though. And here's the couple events that are the 3X, not 3 namespace, but the 3X. So not made by 3JS, but just sort of extra things that I found a long, long time ago and kind of still use. Uh, and now we're getting into the 3JS proper. Yay! So is that okay? How are you guys doing? This is a Zim Explorer. And remember, if we've explored too much for your brain, you're always welcome to just pause and get a cookie or a blueberry or something like that. And well, maybe more than one blueberry. Um, and come on back and watch. But we're now about to go into the 3JS proper. Hmm. All right, to make something that we see is a combination of a geometry. So here's a geometry, a material, here's a material, and then we mesh the, the geometry and the material together to make our mesh. That's our sort of final object. And then we add that object to the scene. So see what I mean? That's pretty good. It, it's like multi-leveled, yes, but in this case, the multi-leveled makes sense. We want to be able to control each of those things and we can reuse a geometry if we wanted to so it totally makes sense uh, in some other frameworks <clears throat> box 2d for instance um, to make a box in box 2d is you break that box gets broken up into something like six or eight parts and it's like oh for crying out loud you gotta make a fixture you gotta uh, etc so we have we have definitely inside a zim we've we brought in we've internalized all all the physics stuff and made that so much easier. It's like uh, new rectangle dot add physics. <laughs> Here we go. Why are you? so? Anyway, in the box two D sense, I mean it is a physics engine, and perhaps you need all of that, um, all of those levels of abstraction. But it was very cumbersome to work with. In three JS, you're working with this stuff all the time, and the abstraction makes sense, and hopefully it's clean enough. We have one extra level here in that we've got a texture coming in, and this texture is a picture. In the past, uh, some of this was a pain in the neck to do. In the past, it seems to have gotten easier. Um, also, in the past, you had different types of loaders, and they kept on <laughs> seeming, seemingly changed. Maybe I got into 3JS at the wrong time, but it was always like, you know, a message in the console saying, that loader is no longer supported. It's like, <laughs> Anyway, hopefully they've settled and um, that this is a fine way to do it. That looks great. That's bringing in our skybox picture. So this is a texture. And then as you see here, when we make the material, we're going to map the texture onto that material. And at that point, we also say which is the side. By default, the front side is turned on. And this is the skybox. We're inside it. So we don't want the front side. We'd have to be outside the skybox. And that's a long way to go. Our skybox is really, really big. <laughs> okay, so we're putting the material to the, the back side. Um, so that we're inside it. We can see in, from the inside. Great. Um, this is kind of, like I said, the uh, uh, part of the template in a sense where we're really going to explore materials and, uh, well, mostly materials, I guess, is down here where we actually have our object and that is our cube, okay? So the skybox is just a picture mapped onto a big sphere and let's kind of leave it at that. Note that that is a sphere geometry. That would be the radius, this would be uh, the, mm, let's see, what do they call those? Let's go take a look. Here's 3JS, I'll show you. 3.js, oh, no, 3JS, uh, can hit the J, dot org. 
And here's all the great things that can be made with 3JS. Remember that these guys, uh, in the most parts, are professionals working in 3D for a long time with, with great looking models and stuff. On the other hand, you can make some excellent looking stuff just even as a beginner in 3JS. But just don't go into this and say, oh my god, I want to make that, I want to make that. You know, you might not be able to quite make that yet. Um, and then here's the documentation, and we're going to type in, so, uh, no, what was it, a sphere, sphere, like this. And it divides it up into different places. And here is geometry. So geometries has a sphere geometry. And when we press that, we can see the segments here is what I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> I figured out how to make this pause. <laughs> but anyway, well, we'll try and describe it. There's segments that go this way. Well, maybe the easiest way is to... Oh, okay. Hey, it's a... What's this called? A pomegranate. But anyway, this is changing the segments going around it. The width segments. And the more you make, the smoother it's going to get. And what you probably want to do is get it to a point. We've got it set at 32, 32 or something like that. You probably want to get it to a point where you can't quite see the bumps. You can sort of see them, but not quite. And then you're not making too many and you're not making too few. But that, that'll be sort of up to you. And you can see that the, the 3D world is made up of a whole bunch of triangles, polys, uh, triangles. And that's kind of how it's done. All those are 2D. But we're um, uh, we're turning them into a 3D-like object. Okay, whoop. So that's nice, huh? Kind of live live edit on that. And I don't know how much that's going to make a difference on a um, on our texture or like our sorry our um, skybox here. But anyway, there they are. And we add them to the scene. Note that we scene dot add skybox. In Zim, we have something like stage dot add child. And in most, like the DOM, it's add child. In Flash, it was add child. In Director, it was add child. But here, it's uh, it's just add. So that's fine. That's nice. And we would then add a rectangle or something like that. In Zim, we hardly ever do it this way anymore because that doesn't really chain the way we want. We would rather make our mesh and dot add to something. Oops, add to. And by default in Zim, if we just say add to, it would have added it to the scene or the stage or whatever. So in other words, we don't do it this way. Instead, as we're making the rectangle, we make a new rectangle. Let's do it. New rectangle. This is an explorer after all. And then we would dot add to the stage like that because then we can also chain on animation or dot ska for the scale. And we do a lot of chaining that way with an add to at the end. Uh, we wouldn't even need, for instance, we might not even need the skybox parameter if we just said add to the scene like this, or if that were the default, then we might not even need to reference this mesh anymore. And we don't even have to put it in a variable like that happens to us quite often. Okay, but anyway, we, we do have uh, the add child is, is inherited from create.js. Const, what was this? Skybox, skybox was inherited from create.js, which was really the same as back in Flash. So we can do it that way if we wanted to, it's just we don't. Um, okay, in practice, I mean, it is still available if we, if, if, and some people coming from CreateJS still do that in Zim, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, come on, stop it, start chaining, <laughs> give up on that old CreateJS stuff and start chaining, much easier. That's where we're getting, in, in part anyway, that's where, aside from all this other stuff here, we're getting our 67%. Uh, the size, um, a lot of it comes from chaining as well. Well, not in this case, because we just remade the 3JS. If, if, yeah, anyway, blah, bitty, blah, bitty. Um, render, what have we got? Where were we? Events down in the skybox. Uh, right, I think we've made it through the skybox now. Sorry, it was kind of like bouncing, because we're going to take another look at this down in the cube, a uh, more specific look. 
And we've got our controls. Here we are bringing in orbit controls. Watch if you're coming from an older script examples, it might have been three dot there. But we uh, are not coming from scripts and, and we brought in, imported the orbit controls directly there. So we use it as whatever name we put there. And here we are using it. We pass in the camera and the renders DOM element, which is basically the canvas uh, that the 3JS is using. Okay, so the render was made up here. And it will have a DOM element that we need to pass into the orbit controls. We can enable damping and set a damping factor as well. And there's a bunch of other settings on orbit controls that are available. Just go here and type in orbit controls. Orbit controls is part of 3JS, but it's an add-on, which means we need to add things to it. And there's all sorts of properties that you can set um, some of the more interesting. So you can turn off different things like the panning. You can turn that off. Uh, you can set the max distance and zooms and um, mins and angles and stuff like that. So in other words, you could make it so that as I try and tilt here, I can only uh, tilt so far. You can, this is called panning. So I'm using the right mouse to pan. You can turn that off or on. You can set how much you can spin it. Uh, okay, and in some of the examples in Zim, we've just been working with these things called texture actives. So I'm going here to the texture, sorry, I just pressed our Zim 015 up there to get to the new features in Zim 015, that's a shortcut way. You can also find this under code, and then in libraries, it takes us to the libraries where we're working with Zim in 3JS and uh, this is Zim in 3JS, this is 3JS in Zim, I suppose, using our three helper module. Um, but anyway, why were we going in here? Um, oh, right, I was, show, I was saying that there's an example in here, actually it's an example we're about to launch, but an example in here where we've limited the orbit uh, controls there. But there's our orbit controls, so there are more settings that, to, to go further. Also, if you don't do the damping, then it looks like this. And we refresh here. Now when I stop, or when I just stop moving, it kind of just stops like that. So that's without damping. And then here's with damping. There's one more step with the damping too. Don't let me forget to show you that. So now if I stop, it continues to damp. It's sort of more smooth motion. The one more step is for that motion to change, down in the renderer here, we have to say controls.update. We're gonna take a look at the renderer um, near the end of our Explorer. So we'll come back to that when we see it. So that's the orbit controls, great. There's also first person controls, which kind of work like that. And back in these examples, here's the first person controls, for instance. So I'm, it will, spin based on my mouse. We have it so it doesn't spin if we're on the panel here. But anyway, it spins and then I can use arrows or WASD to sort of move. Now these these mo uh, these meshes are positioned in space here. Ooh, and those are texture actives. So we'll see some of the texture actives just briefly. You can already see videos on those if you want videos on this. But anyway, this is a first person control. There's also settings as you look up, tilt up, you can kind of make it so it flies. Um, and uh, great. Okay. So they're quite similar. You just bring in first person controls and it's similar. Uh, here we are. We're now at the crux of it all. And that is, hey, we want to build something. We want to put it into our template. All the rest of the stuff we've been talking about is kind of like the template, boilerplate, whatever. Now we want to put something in here. Woohoo! So we're going to choose to make a cube, uh, which used to be cube geometry, but then they realized cubes, I think, have equal sides. Therefore, this is better, box geometry. Uh, we have made a cube, though, but we don't have to, and we'll play around with these numbers and see what uh, is happening in our geometry. So that's our geometry. Then we have a diff some different types of materials to look at. And we have chosen, in this case, to use a material that looks at light, or that light 
sees the material, or whatever you want to say, light works on the material. So we have our material, and then down below we mesh our geometry and our material, and then we add that to the scene. Woohoo! So if we didn't add it to the scene, we would get bum 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 nothing. Well, the skybox. Okay, so <clears throat> there you are. Well, let's now take a look at the materials. Oh, no, before we look at the materials, let's explore the dimensions here a little bit. So this is the Z dimension right here, which means if we make it bigger, say 500, then it's going to come out at us. Wow, there it is. There it is coming out. Uh, by the way, it's centered, so that means 250 is coming out, 250 is going back, and therefore it's almost reaching the camera, like that. We could make it go past the camera, which was at six, what was the camera? So it, the camera is at 300, so if we make this 700, it's going to go through the camera. You ready? <laughs> and it didn't. Why not? It almost went through the camera. Uh, did we... Oh, we've moved the camera up. Okay, so that, that would be... We've moved the camera up and over as well, so that uh, made it go farther. Let's adjust our camera. Just looking for it. So we'll set this to zero, and that to zero, and now it's just 300 back, and now it will go through the camera. Boom. Oh, it went through the camera. There it is. So note how it started. It started looking right at it, but right at it is through the camera, and now we can't see it because it's single-sided. Like that. We could adjust that. You know how? Bum, bum, bum. Down here. How's this for an explorer, huh? We could adjust that by saying, hey, let's set the side of our material. We haven't really looked at materials yet. We're just playing around up here. But anyway, if we set it to double side right there, let's see what happens. <clears throat> Now, there's inside it and outside it. Okay, but if you don't need to see inside, then that's a waste of, of you know, putting material inside. But if you are going to go in, then you want to see it. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's see. Let's comment that out. <clears throat> and adjust one of these other sides. We'll put that to back to 100. Uh, 100. And now let's change the Y. So now it's going to be higher than it used to be. And there it is, higher than it used to be. We can pull back. So I'm using the scroll wheel. Oh, I forgot to show you the scroll wheel or talk about the scroll wheel in there. The scroll wheel's doing your zoom. So there we are, zooming out and in. Okay, so anyway, that's higher in the Y. And here it is, wider in the X. Uh, 400. Okay. And again, it's scaling about its... Uh, it, it has a central registration point, we could call it. Good. So that's the geometry. And now let's talk about materials. If we didn't have lighting, so this is a mesh Lambert material. I suppose that's somebody's name. There's also a mesh Fong. Both of those need lighting. Mesh Normal doesn't need lighting, and it just adds some sort of pastel colors to it. And then Mesh Basic is you can make your own colors up, but uh, it lighting doesn't affect it. In other words, light's always on, in a sense. So, let's go try taking off the lighting. So I'm going to pause the lighting, or comment out the lighting, and we'll have a look here. There's what it looks like with the material with no lighting, and it's like, hey, wait a minute, why can't I see it? I made it red. Wah. It said that it was red, I can't see it. Wah. And it's because the lighting will affect it. However, if we made it a mesh basic material right here, bop, like that, and we'll comment this one out. Okay, see what we're doing? So this is mesh basic material, squiggly brackets, color red, up. 
And we come back here and we refresh. Now it's red. Oh, let's also uh, put the camera back to two, what was it? Minus 200, minus 200, and I think this was 200, like that. <clears throat> there we go. So now it's just red, but we can't see the lighting is not affecting it. Did we turn the lighting back on? I think we did. No, we didn't. Okay, so as you can see, even without lighting, we can see it. But now let's bring the lighting back like that. And you'll see it's the same. So the lighting doesn't affect it. It is just that color. And because it's exactly that color, it means we can't even discern the edges of the cube in here. These are called faces. <laughs> it's wrong, wrong time to demonstrate this, but uh, the, the big parts, the flat parts there are called faces, the, and then there's edges as well, and vertices are the little um, corners of, of this stuff in 3D terminology. Uh, all right, so that means our material here, our mesh basic material, is not being affected by the light. And one thing you can do with that, though, let's turn this part off is these are all mesh basic materials down here too. So let's bring back this material. And, oh, and then we don't even want these guys. So perhaps I'll bring that back for now and comment all those out like so. So now what we're doing is we're adding an array of six different materials. Each of those have different colors. <clears throat> and we're passing in that array to here. We used to have to make a separate type of material. It was like, I can't remember what it was called, array material or something like that. And we would pass in each of these to the array material and then pass the array material in. But yay, it's not as hard anymore. We just pass that whole array in. So if you have a cylinder, a cylinder has three different places to put materials, the top and the bottom and around the, the edge of the, of the cylinder. And then you can make an array of three things and pass that in. Or you could just pass one material, but then it would map that material onto the, <clears throat> or it would place that material onto the, the same material onto all the edges. Uh, here are all the sides, sorry. Here is us, here we are putting something on a different one. Okay, let's have a look here. All right, ugly HTML colors. Ugh. Nice green, forest green, Ugh, pink. Pink's awful, isn't it? It's more like puce or liverwurst. Maybe it's slightly skin <laughs> colored, I don't know. <laughs> Pig skin colored. Um, okay, so now it doesn't matter about the lighting, but we get these colors like that. And we'll show you the same in Zim and use Zim colors. Speaking of colors, you'll often find that they do something like <clears throat> uh, zero X, F, well, I often use capital letters, 0000. zero, zero, zero. So that's a red like that. This is stands for hex, make a hex number like that. And that's a way of doing color in JavaScript. And so this will put a red one. Which one will be red? Hmm, any guesses? When I refresh here, which one do you think will be red? This is what, how it started. Will this be red? Will that be red? Will that be red? It's the positive X. So which one's positive X? there. Okay, so instead of pink, it's going to be red. Ready? There it is, red. I don't know why that one went pink, though. <laughs> was it always? Maybe, maybe it was rotated. But anyway, there it is. The positive x is red. Right there. Okay, but you can. Um, in this case, there's other cases where you can't quite set a color as easily as just saying that. What, what did we put here? Is it just red? Did we say red? Orange. Okay. Um, sometimes it's not that easy to put a color. You have to make a new three RGB color or something like that. It's like, oh, seriously? And then put this in the RGB color or put RGB, I guess, in the RGB color. But anyway, you can also use hex in here as a string. But like I said, it works for your material colors, but there are some times when you have to set a color outside in 3JS that I think it's still, you have to make a three color object of some sort. So watch for that. Anyway, isn't that neat? Oh, uh, by the way, just to finish it off here, here are the or here's the order. So the positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, negative z. 
totally makes sense. If I were going to do it, that's how I would have done it. And that's what's nice about working with three JS. It totally makes sense. They they did a, an excellent job in, in their framework. So, uh, woot, woot. Okay. Um, now we're meshing those together. Okay, we want to stop doing that, though. Oh, we wanted to check some of these other ones out, right? So there's our mesh basic material. We saw that, and I was bringing all this back. Like that, it's not using the mesh basic material, but let's try the mesh normal material. This is another one that won't make a difference if we have lights or not. And it looks like this. Aren't those nice little pastel colors? So that's sort of like the default, I don't know, mesh normal. <laughs> I don't know what the, it's kind of like, hey, if you don't want to bother putting putting stuff on every, every side, just do a mesh normal material and we'll add these nice little colors for you. It's kind of like a, quick debug mode or a quick uh, dem demo mode, sort of, All right? Great. Kind of reminds me of clown colors or something. No, gest gesture, not clown, more like gesture colors. That's the mesh normal material. Once again, that doesn't matter if you have lights. So if we didn't have lights, it would look the same. And now we go to the mesh fong material. So the last one, it's not necessarily the last material, but these are the materials that I know. There's another material, I think, that shows like a grid of stuff that could be handy for you, or the vertices. I can't remember what that is, debug material or something like that. All right, this is Fong, so it will pay attention to the lighting, as you can see. It also has a bit of a, a reflection, so if we can get this to point right at, which you can't seem to, I'm not sure where the light is <laughs> anymore. Anyway, the lights. Uh, if you can get it to point it right at the light, then you can get a reflection. Let me show you an example. Hmm, under examples or whatever, uh, we could go to the Zim 015 things, but this, this guy right here has mesh fong, and you see how it's reflecting the light? This has a point, I think this has a point light, maybe not, maybe that's a directional light, but look, there, there it is. Check out that, okay? So fong will do that. I don't think Lambert does that, okay? So that's a difference there. And then we're back to Lambert. Woohoo! We talked about the double side. We talked about the color uh, note as well. You could also map on there. And where did we do the map? Right here. So there's a map of a picture on there. In which case, uh, you, you also have, uh, and put it in here, you have mm, transparent colon true. I think that's it. And then opacity, opacity colon, I can't remember, but I think it's like 0.4. So I think it's 0 to 1 again on that. All right, but you can look that up. So those are some other options that you have as well for uh, for the materials. <clears throat> we, coming from Zim, we're quite used to working with the configuration object here, which is nice to have. But just a note that 3JS doesn't have the Zim Duo technique. So in other words, we can't just say red here if that happens to be or quote red if that happens to be the first parameter and then some other thing later and then switch to the the configuration object okay so in zim uh, i think most of the people watching this are probably coming from the zim world so you're already fairly familiar with that but we can do new uh, rectangle and squiggly brackets corner well why don't we go mm, color colon blue like that and that goes directly to the color parameter or we could have said new rectangle squiggly brackets null or if you use the ES6 undefined undefined um, blue that's so there's parameters done regularly in order or if you like the <coughs> undefined there in ES6 uh, if you have an ES6 class in behind, undefines will trigger the defaults, nulls will not. Zim is built on ES5, and we uh, kept null as triggering the default. <coughs> so, 
So there we go. These two things will do the same thing. This is called the Zim Duo technique. And it looks like maybe 3JS is doing that, but just a warning. They're not. There's no other way to do it. You can only have the squiggly brackets. There may be other parameters in here. I think there are. So you might have some other parameters in there, but the first parameter happens to be an object literal where you can set various properties like that. Okay. Um, we were very proud of the Zim Duo technique, and I guess we still are. Uh, as far as I know, we're the only framework in JavaScript that does that. But then just <laughs> like a couple of months ago, my child came to me and said, hey, you know, Python does that. And I went, what? But seriously, it does? And took a look, and sure enough, Python um, does a way, it's not quite the same, but you say equals blue, which don't get confused with setting in ES6, uh, collecting parameters in there. That's how we would collect a parameter with a default in ES6. But that's when you're inside the class or the function collecting something. This is in, in, in uh, Python, this is how you can send a, you can send a blue value to the color parameter. Uh, just by doing this. In Zim, we do it like so. Okay, similar. Anyway, blah, 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 a little interlude there. And coming on down, let's finish this off, shall we? Uh, we've got two more things to do. One is just take a look at the bottom of here, but we also want to see how it's done in, in Zim as well. That's, that's very quick because uh, it's just, hey, we just did this and it does all this stuff for you. The rest is all the same. And so that's what we're heading towards. Here are the lights. As mentioned, there is a point light as well that just now requires, it worked just fine previously and it's very similar. It's the same kind of deal where we can position the point light, uh, but it didn't work. So there's one more step where we would have to go light one dot, I can't remember what it was, focus or focal is equal to point 0.1 or something like that. As soon as you set something like that, then it works. But that, that wasn't it. Uh, probably should look that up. I, I did a comment on the 3JS. Is it worth trying to find? I don't know. Maybe. Let's see if we can do it. So here's 3JS. Here's the, the, the front page of 3JS. And where's our forum right there? How can I find out if I've mentioned anything? Um, is it here? So I gave an answer. Yeah, there it is. Oh, good. There it is. We found it. Woohoo. Um, thanks for the tip on decay. There it is. Um, for the spotlight, I had to set decay equal to zero. <laughs> Should we try it then? <laughs> this is an explore. So where is spotlight? I thought it was a point light. Okay. Mm, I'm using point lights. Are point lights and spotlights the same? I can't remember. We can look it up. Anyway, let's try a decay of zero. Light. And see if we can get a point light going. Also note, we're using the variable light1 and light2. Normally, I might have just called that light and light, 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 light. But light is a Zim color, um, along with dark, light, lighter, darker. And that would overwrite the, Zim, the ability to use the Zim color. So anyway, no big deal. And we were trying to set the decay of light1. Light1 dot decay. Probably just zero is good. I don't know what that's all about exactly. We can look it up as, as we're going to do that. And we want to change that to a point light. Hmm. Let's see. Where are we now? We're in basics, which is in the three folder. In the three folder, I probably have some older examples with lights. Let's try light in this one only an ambient light and there's the GLTF loader so only an ambient light there <laughs> it's called light 3 I guess we copied that from somewhere didn't we um, how about on the phone there's one oh point light yay so there's a 
point light. We have nothing else, so no intensity. That'll take a default intensity. And it's just called point light. Okay, I'm positioned. Yeah, just called point lights. I don't know if we'll need the intensity, and let's have a look. Dum 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 dum. Hey, it worked. Now the the big question is: is if we take away the decay, will it not work? <laughs> I'm just imagining things. And here we go. Uh, dum dum dum. Yeah, it didn't work. So it's gone. All right. Yeah, that was a good tip. Light one dot decay, and I'm sure that if we look that up in here, under a point light, how do we get back to the the main three JS? Okay, discourse. <coughs> point light, point light decay. The amount of light the light dims along the distance of the light default is two. Anyway, I'm not sure if that's a bug or if I don't know too much about uh, lights, but we'll leave that for now. Super. Those are lights and down below, oh, uh, not quite finished. Um, point light we're positioning somewhere. In this case, we're positioning it up and, or sorry, up here to the right and, sorry, that's up, <laughs> out, out in front of us, out and, or I, I, it depends on how you think of it, out behind us perhaps. So out of the screen, let's have a look. Let me refresh here. The light is if we're looking at this straight on it would be like that so we have the light positioned over here so that's why i guess the this side right here is brighter than the back it's up so that's why the top is brighter than than here and then it's no oh crap and then it's 200 uh out so back from us so why this is even is it's 200 over in the in the x and it's 200 out which makes a perfect so right now here's where the light is basically down here and that's why these two things are exactly the right color uh, probably would have been better to make this slightly different maybe <clears throat> make it over 100 let's see if that's work let's see if that works okay we refresh here. Yeah, there we go. So now these are slightly different colors, and oh, only these colors are are not different. But you can turn to something called three-point lighting. We've kind of uh, are faking it a little bit here. We have um, like two-point lighting where we have one has a direction and the other is ambient. Without the ambient, it's a little tricky to deal with you. Oops, you'd have to uh, really get probably your three-point lighting in place. Uh, I didn't see much of a change here. And save it. Save it. Okay, where if you don't have light here, it's black. So that's kind of annoying. That means I'd have to go and put light in behind it. And then you find, ah, oh, this face is too dim. And I'll put light over here. Uh, so anyway, that's that's lighting for you. Yeah, it's a whole art on its own, but here we're kind of cheating a bit by setting an ambient light. You can also change the colors of these and the intensities of these. Shall we see if white works here? I presume it does. Yeah, it does. So, and it, how about if we do something like <clears throat> the yellow? We see a difference. Mm, a little, not too much. If we bring up the intensity of that, mm, one. Yeah, it's looking a little yellowed. Obviously, if we didn't make it red, we'd be a 
able to see that a bit better. White. Okay, and there's a white cube that's being colored by our yellow light. The ambient isn't yellow, so the light's only hitting, it looks like, <clears throat> those three faces. And is that, I wonder if that's a rule of light that it's only ever going to hit, um, in a cube anyway, it's only ever going to hit three or a rectangle. There's the yellow is not hitting any of that. All right, undo, undo, undo. Yeah, should we leave that in there? Is that, I suppose, so. all throughout the examples, it's like that. Yeah, so leave it. <clears throat> Losing a bit of my voice here, some grumbles. Yay, that's lights then. We'll call that lights. Those are your intensities. Down below here, we have the render loop, and this is a request animation frame which is a traditional way now in, in ES6 to animate something so that this will get called on screen refresh rate and make it as nice and smooth as possible. We use the request animation frame in Zim as well in the ticker, so a Zim ticker. And here is uh, what's happening basically is we call it once, that gets it started, calls the render, and then request animation frame will call render again when it's ready. And we're updating the controls. We're also rendering the scene. So that's what is actually making the scene render. Yay. Here's some animation. So we can tell the mesh to rotate about its Y axis a little bit. Uh, remember that this is radian, so you could also say something like five degrees times math.pi, like that, divided by 180 would bring you to your radians. That's rotated five degrees every time, or one, de one degree every time. Or you can just put a small number like 0 0.01 and say, how does that look? Let's try it. We refresh here, and there she be. So now the cube itself, or the mesh itself, is rotating. Here is us rotating the camera about that. And now it's rotating. Oh, I did want to show you just a slight difference between when we have a skybox and when we don't. So anyway, there's that rotating around the Y. Let's finish this off, though. If we rotate it around the other axes, you get sort of weird things happening. I'm sure you've figured out the X, Y, and Z now. Let's do this in order. X, Y, and Z. Uh, so I don't have to go in and show you rotation about each one individually. But here's something weird. When you rotate about all of them, you get uh, something strange. It's sort of like, what the heck is it doing? Wait a minute. Why is it going backwards now? Well, it's going... <laughs> It's, gone. it's not quite as you expect. It's not. It's because the an axis of a cube is not as you expect. It's on some weird angle. Like, I don't know. it's actually hard to rotate a cube around one corner and another corner. As a matter of fact, in the Zim Helper module, we actually put that in as a function to be able to do that uh, to rotate around uh, a triangle. Uh, well, not a triangle, but from corner to corner. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, it's, it's going like, what? It's got a mind of its own. Uh, which one do we have here? We were rotating around the Y. So we'll leave that commented out. <clears throat> and what I wanted to show you is what this looks like without a skybox. Because you'll be kind of surprised. So here we are, no skybox. Now watch what happens. It just looks like I'm rotating that, doesn't it? Woo. The lighting, though, is still giving it up that we're not really rotating the box. If we rotated the box, then the lighting wouldn't kind of change. You would see it. it well, it, it would. Here, I'll show you. So that's what it looked like with the rotating the camera around it. Now if we rotate around the Y here, you'll see that there's a slight difference. So I haven't saved it yet. 
This is one where as we're rotating, you see how the dark has come in there? And then it's light, and then it's dark, and then it's light. You ready? Refresh. See that? The light is always on the right-hand side, and as it's rotating, sorry, I rotated backwards, I guess. As it's rotating, uh, the light is hitting that face and changing the color of it which is obviously now it seems like we're rotating the object. However, people don't necessarily pay attention to lighting, and often we don't have lighting on a, on, on a model or something like that. We might not even have any lighting, and therefore this appears like we're spinning the object. So that's a, a, something that we've used in Zim. When we, when we originally worked with 3JS and Zim, we brought 3JS um, meshes into Zim, and then controlled them with uh, various sliders and dials and stuff like that of Zim and just had this sort of 3D object in front rotating or scaling or whatever it was doing. And it appeared that if that we were rotating the object, and sometimes we were, if we were doing our own sliders and dials, we were probably actually rotating the object. But we also had it so that you could just use orbit zoom in combination with Zim, like Zim all around it, but the 3D part had orbit zoom, and then it still looked like you were just rotating the model, but you were actually rotating the camera. As a matter of fact, it took me probably a year or two working with orbit controls before I realized that. <laughs> so that's why that's why I've said it a few times: is you might not realize realize at all what what exactly is happening there. Okay, uh, good. We've made it through. We did add a little bit extra here to, and I wonder if just we can add that overflow quickly. Uh, does that go to the body overflow? We have to do X and Y, or can I just do overflow colon hidden? Or is it scroll bars false? Is this how you turn off scroll bars? Maybe. I can't remember if I have to turn off the scroll bars in a different way. So now we are going to. Uh, for the most part, we got some background color issues. But yeah, I think that solves it. Does that solve it? Let's take it back off again any different. Yeah, there they are. Okay, good. All right, well, that was simple enough, huh? We will uh, keep, that in, keep that in there. All right. <clears throat> are we back to normal? No, we're not back to normal. We need the skybox back. I think we're back to normal, and we've gotten rid of the scroll bars. Yeah. All right, back to normal. Scroll bar fix. Good. One last step then on our explorer is to take a look at a different file. Now this is the basics underscore zim file, where we are going to bring in zim with. 3 on the end, zim underscore 3. Oh, and I don't need the dot js. Okay. So uh, the reason why that happened is I was doing some experimenting with a local version of this. And when you do a local version, as in dot dot slash here, if I did that and, and go to my local version of zim 3, you have to put the dot js on the end. Otherwise, it won't find the file. But we don't need it on the, the, the full URL. -er. So we're bringing in Zim3, <clears throat> at which point we need a frame. There's so much in, like, if you're going to use Zim, we expect you to also use Zim in a frame of some sort. Uh, so in three in our three helper module, so what, what this will, will bring in is Zim. It brings in, well, CreateJS, Zim. 3JS, Orbit Controls, First Person Controls, and GLTF Loader. Those three extra things there. Oh, and the, the Zim 3 Helper Module. Okay. So those three extra things, the Orbit Controls, the First Person Controls, and the GLTF Model, they're puny. 
it doesn't really matter. Just wrap it in the bloody library. That's what I would have done. But maybe there's just so many of them and perhaps that doesn't make sense. I don't know by the time you add them all up. But <laughs> there are so many different helpers that it's understandable. That's why 3JS did it. Uh, there's all sorts of different model loaders and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these days, I think that um, loading GLTF seems to be the way to go. And that's pretty small. There's the, um, one second. I'm getting a telephone call. Hang on, I put this on pause. Um, we're back. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, what was I saying? The orbit controls and the first person controls are quite small. We're talking like maybe a K, a couple K or something like that. And in the end, just to save the headache, it's easier to wrap them in there as far as I'm concerned, especially with uh, compression loading this thing. It's hardly, it's a fraction, fraction, fraction of an image, for instance. So don't, don't worry about it. Don't fret it. It'll work out fine. So we're bringing them all in here. That makes it easy. We are calling a frame and this is us doing the ready callback right there. That's the same as ready colon ready with the zim v value. And often we have different things here too. We have scaling colon fit, uh, color background colors, etc. cetera. But uh, if you just want a frame, that's the fastest way to a frame. And there's our callback right there. You could also put in an event if you wanted to. So you could also say something like const frame is equal to that and then frame dot on ready call this arrow function okay or run the frames ready call ready that would also work as well but uh, we do have a callback within the frame here and there we are calling the callback within the frame so when it's ready we run a new three right here where we're passing in the width and the height. Uh, by the way, if later when we're gonna go explore how to bring Zim into the play here as well, the width and the height may not be the whole window size. It might just be 500 by 500. And that means in Zim, we'll have a 500 by 500 rectangle and inside that is 3JS operating. So uh, that's kind of how this all started is like, how do we get this so that we can easily bring 3JS into Zim? Now it's flipped where we're bringing Zim into 3JS. So we're, we're gonna see examples of that and it's very exciting, okay? But anyway, back here, a width and a height, there's that and a camera position because we usually need to do that. But we don't have to go through all that boilerplate making of a camera stuff, so yay. Unless you really have to, and if you really have to, you don't have to use this. You can still use Zim and CreateJS together uh, with sort of the raw three, or sorry, Zim and 3JS together with the raw 3JS. So there's our camera position. We have turned the color management off by default because if you use any old examples, it washes out. And I mean, completely washes out. Even things like the background skybox image just goes So unless you know what you're doing, then we found in this transition period this is the safest for us and our users. But I don't mind turning it on there. There's interactive true. Uh, by default, if you throw 3JS into Zim, you, you get to choose. You, you, you're either using Zim or you're using 3JS. And we have ways around that now. We're gonna show you that along here. These are these different options. But traditionally, you can use one Canvas framework or the other or the DOM. You can't use, the, if they overlap one another, you can't get the pointer events through there unless you do something fancy and behind. Like that That takes working together. And we've done some of that working together. For instance, in CreateJS, CreateJS and, and Zim, same kind of deal. Um, we have a way to pass it through to next frames. So if we have multiple frames all sitting on top of one another, those are like canvases on top of one another, we have ways to pass the uh, mouse events through all of that stuff because we worked it out. We're, 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 we're the same framework basically, and it was worked out. But if we have three JS and Zim, that, those are different frameworks, and we haven't, we have now with Texture Active worked a way to pass through ray casting. But we'll show you that later. 
Anyway, for now, um, how it stands with the Zim 3 helper is if you, this sets 3JS interactive. If you don't do that, then 3JS is not interactive because we're assuming that you're using Zim for the interaction. So that's like buttons and sliders and dials and Zim operating on 3D objects. Okay. But if you want orbit zoom, well then, anyway, you got to turn this interactive if you want 3JS to be interactive. The other thing that we've done is we normally, uh, this would not be necessarily full screen. So let me show you what this looks like without the full here. Well, oops, didn't need to do that. Comment out. So if we comment that out and refresh here, or no, not refresh, open this in a default browser, it looks great. There it is. It's all still working. But watch what happens. If I open up the window here, we're in a Zim full mode and it didn't do anything with that. So if I do this, like that, starts off great. Looks okay if I shrink it. But if I make it bigger than it used to be, <laughs> just out, there's white stuff. I was like, oh, okay. So in other words, 3JS isn't being scaled to a full screen. It's, it, it's taking the initial full thing. But when we do the full mode in Zim, we have to do scaling ourselves. So we have to do, this is a DOM element right here, and we have to scale that DOM element ourselves. Um, so anyway, if, you, if you're if you not wanting to do that, you can say full true, and then we'll handle that scaling uh, for you. So now, well, let's make it start off smaller. <laughs> I need some room to open it up. Refresh, there we go, and get the corner here. There's our scaling. There's probably a way, by the way, we're seeing white going on there. There's probably a way to set some color somewhere so that we don't get that. What color if we, oh, we haven't done any color on here. So uh, that would be probably the outer color, um, black. Yeah, let's see if that changes. I don't know if it will or not, I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, so because we hadn't set a color, we were sort of seeing a little bit of the background as, as we're doing that. Now, now we don't. Okay. Um, may as well leave that in there. It looks a bit better. So that's what the full is doing. And we're going to show you ways to, to bring in 3JS into Zim. And that's a little bit different, what we're doing there. So we don't really need the full at that point. And in the past, the examples in the past have not used the full. So full is a recent thing that we put in when we realized, oh, now that we've done the Zim in 3JS, we have a little better handle on how 3JS handles its scaling. And we've just recently, and as a matter of fact, in a patch to 0.15, added full here and uh, an underlay and an overlay option. But we'll see those when we, when we come later. They don't, they don't make... We don't need to see them right now. Great. So anyway, this is the three, the Zim 3 stuff, and it will make a three render, a three scene, and a three camera. And we're just uh, putting that into local variables there. So all of this stuff right here, note as well that it makes, we have no render down here. We have no request animation frame. All of that stuff is built in. So let's have a look and see what this replaces. This is Zim. Uh, not only that, I guess it's one call right here. And then here's that. You ready? Come back over here. Uh, it sort of eliminates some extra importing. I guess that we've got there. Uh, but more so, here's our scene. So we don't need to make a scene. We don't need to make a camera stuff. We don't need to make a render. We don't need to do the events. And we don't need to do the render down here. And we don't need to do the styling. So the styling, the render, the sort of event scaling, the render creation up here, and the camera and the scene. All of that is done in here. Yay! Okay, and then the rest is 
normal. The only different thing is under controls here. Remember how we added the controls to the renderer back here? Whoop. So down below here, we added the controls to the render loop, controls.update. To access the render loop from Zim, you can do it this way. Three, so on the three object right here, the three object right here, three, is what is responsible for making the render. So you say three dot pre-render equals this function. And that will run this function right before it renders. So there's the render, it runs that function right here. <laughs> right there. It will run whatever that function. There's also a post render, and the post render will run right here after function. Okay, and that allows us to throw the controls.update into the render. If we wanted to, if we're in Zim, we usually would just do this ticker.add arrow function, and then we put the render in there. So let's have a look, see if it works. We refresh, and there's our orbit controls working. That part of the orbit controls is just that that extra glide at the end. So if you didn't have that, it looks a little glitchy. Quite glitchy. So the problem is, is if I throw it like that and then just pick it up, it picks up from a different place because in time that had moved, yet we didn't render the movement. So you see when I throw it and then pick up, it, it's from a different place. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it looks, yeah, it looks glitchy. We don't need to do it this way. We can throw it into the pre-render there. That's great. Um, rest is the same, exactly the same. Nothing there, nothing down here. But all this inside stuff, aside from that render thing, all that inside is the same, and you have that nice short beginning. You don't even really have to do this if you don't want to, but it just means that we can use the single word rather than the three, the namespace in there. Yay! And ladies and gentlemen, ooh, 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 ooh. that is the end of our explore. I am Dr. Abstract. I hope that was good for you to uh, take a look at how to use 3JS inside of uh, Zim. Or no, actually just how to use 3JS in general was what we were talking about. And we're gonna take a look at how to combine that with Zim elements in our next Explore. Well, that was a lot of fun. I like 3JS a lot. And uh, it's even better when we start doing that texture active stuff. So wow, it's fun. Okay, talk to you later. Come and join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack if you have any questions about that. Cheers. And one shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Dube for making 3JS. Cheers. <laughs>